so good. Hi friends, it's Jen at the Sunshine Farm. As you can see, it's gloriously beautiful today. Absolutely a spring day. And today we're gonna take you on our maple syrup adventure. So it's actually only like 40 degrees, but I swear it feels like 60. Like I'm getting hot in this jacket and I actually opened the back door to let in some nice fresh air. I also brought my plants outside for a field trip. Well guys, I will say our maple syrup tapping this year was very spontaneous. I was the one who wanted to tap the trees. Chris was interested, but he has a lot of other projects on his mind, like the barn renovation. The way we approached tapping our trees and boiling down the syrup and all of that was far from organized. <laughs> so it started out in early March when I noticed the temperature was getting warm during the day. Maple syrup, the way it works is, once the temperature is starting warm during the day, above freezing during the day, while staying below freezing at night, that's when your sap starts flowing in the tree, and that's when you can start collecting sap to turn it into maple syrup. With the temperatures warming up a little early for us in March, I realized we needed to get some buckets. So Chris and I went over to our local country store and looked to see what they had. We are on our way to the store to pick up some things for tapping our maple trees. So we wanted to get some footage of the supplies that we needed and just share this little adventure with you. This is where we were not organized. We picked up whatever we could find that we could use immediately. Guys, the bucket fell over. This tree flows so crazy that when the bucket gets full, of course when it's full, it just like falls out of the tree. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it back up. Well, I guess we missed out on about five gallons of sap today from that tree. So we got whatever supplies we could and we brought them back with us. And we just picked up two buckets and two lids. Fantastic. <laughs> we will figure it out. I don't know what we were thinking. I think we knew at that point that you had to collect about 40 gallons of sap in order to make a gallon of maple syrup, but we still somehow in our minds thought that two buckets would be okay. So we had our two buckets and then we decided to tap some trees. This is where it was a little silly, guys. The first tree we tapped, out of about seven or eight trees in total, the very first tree that we tapped was not a maple tree. And so of course it didn't start flowing and we didn't collect any sap and we were really curious as to why. And then we discovered over time that it was an ash tree. So it was kind of ironic that we recorded this whole segment of us tapping a tree and it didn't end up being a maple tree. Luckily, the next tree we tapped, that one right there, is a maple and sap started coming out right away so we knew we had done something right. Oh yeah, look at this one, it's dripping. Oh yeah? Uh -huh. That's so cool. That's really cool. So, do you think we didn't drill the other one deep enough? No, I drew it the same depth. So you think it's just, this one's got the sap flowing more already? Or we were somehow wrong about the species tree we're tapping another one. <laughs> it's like squirting out every time you... Oh, there it goes. <laughs> Science experiment at the Sunshine Farm. Science experiment that's going to taste really yummy on our pancakes. And so we 
just finished tapping two of our maple trees and one the sap came right out as soon as we drilled in. It was really exciting. The way you tell if a tree is a maple tree, and I'm sure someone will correct me on this, but we heard it from people who actually tap, is you look at the branches. What you wanna see is them meeting perfectly at the bigger branch. So like the little small branches are, are meeting at a, like almost like a joint. I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, I can't think what the correct term would be to describe it properly. The way you identify maple trees is through what's called opposite branching, which means that when you have one branch, two branches meet up at that center branch perfectly. And so you can tell that it might be a maple tree. There are two other kinds of trees that also have opposite branching. I believe it's the dogwood and the ash tree. This is very precarious right here. I'm gonna hold on to my uh, steed. <laughs> Slipping like crazy, but so go out. You can go out in the middle of winter and you can identify which trees are maples. Now, the real question is what kind of maples do you have? Well, we just tapped a silver maple and we could tell because of the way that the buds looked. <laughs> Slipping. Push you along on ah. this. It's like an ice rink over here. I really want to have an ice rink one day somewhere. I think that'd be really fun. So anyways, go out, check out your trees, see if you've got any maples. If you're in California or Texas, probably not going to happen for you. But um, at least not the kind that you are going to be able to tap. Because I'm pretty sure you can only do that when you get lots of below freezing temperatures. So anywho guys, we just had the trees and we're going to go check the sap later. Well, I'm freezing right now and I need to go inside because my feet are cold and my hands are cold. And but before I do, I want to check and see if the sap is flowing at this tree yet. Because it didn't seem to be flowing earlier when we checked. No. Hmm. wonder if it doesn't get enough sun here. Maybe it's still too cold. Could be that this Sounds area right it, doesn't get quite enough heat. So maybe this type of tree just doesn't flow as quickly as the silver maple. This is a different kind of maple. I wanted to show you guys this this ash tree. See that? That's a spile that is not collecting any sap because this is not a maple tree. But I'll show you why it's so confusing. Let's see. Whoops, that broke right off. Let's see if I can find. Okay, I found an example. You see that branch right there? See how it meets up right in the middle? That's actually where I got confused. Cause I'm gonna take you over to a maple tree to show you that exact same opposite branching. And if you're just looking for opposite branching and you don't know how to identify bark and you don't know how to identify the buds, then it could be really confusing. Okay, take a look at this tree right here. Opposite branching, but this tree, those are maple buds and I'm not quite sure if this is a red maple, a silver maple, or a sugar maple. It kind of looks like a red maple, but if you have any ideas, feel free to let me know in the comments because I am no maple expert. But I, what I do want to show you is the difference between that last tree and this tree is pretty clear. Sap is flowing, guys. Sap is flowing, and that means we can make some maple syrup. Also, the bark is pretty different too, but at first glance, it can look the same. So it was a little bit tricky. Anywho, this tree is another huge one. I don't know if you can tell, but it's gotta be about three feet diameter right there. So we have two taps in that one as well. So we had our blue buckets and we quickly realized that we needed some more capacity. So I actually went up and picked some more blue buckets and some more spiles to help us tap some more trees. Then we realized that these blue buckets were not able to hold as much sap as we would like. They hold about two and a half gallons and we knew that we could get buckets that held five gallons. So we went on over to Home Depot and we picked up 10 five gallon food grade buckets. You wanna make sure they're food grade if you decide to do that. So we picked up our five gallon buckets and we picked up some more spiles and we tapped the rest of the trees. Chris actually worked on this while I was in class one night. And so then we started really getting the sap. We've collected 60 to 80 gallons of sap at this point, 
and we don't actually think we have any sugar maples. We know we have a lot of silver maples and we have at least a couple of red maples, but the sugar maples are the ones that are about 40 to one ratio in terms of sap to maple syrup. And so we know that the trees that we have aren't producing quite as much sugar in their sap, which means we have to boil down a little bit more to get the maple syrup. So when it came to boiling down the maple syrup, we knew we were somewhat limited in options. We don't have good seasoned firewood right now to light a fire outside. We also don't have the capacity to be watching maple syrup boil down all day and adding wood to the fire. So we went with the propane option, which is not the most cost effective, I will say that. Next year we're probably going to come up with a bit of a different plan. And then we set up our propane stove outside and we get ready to boil down like 20 gallons of sap, but it was horribly windy the flame kept going out. So we went ahead and made our own little barricade for the wind. Basically our own little sugar shack. <laughs> there it is guys in all of its glory. So that is where we put the propane stove. So far we have made Let's see, 12, 24 plus 12, 36, 36 plus 68. So we have made 104 ounces, which is pretty close to a gallon. And I think our goal for this year is about two gallons. So we are continuing to collect lots of sap. We definitely have collected enough now to make another gallon. So we just need to boil it down, which takes a long time. And since our system isn't very good, we don't have a lot of surface area to cook off. We can't do a whole lot at once. And so it basically means using an entire weekend or multiple nights in a row to boil down the sap into syrup. What are we planning on using all of this syrup for? Well, we actually want to use maple syrup as our primary sugar for everything. For sweetening coffee, for baked goods, desserts, pancakes of course and breakfasts, Dutch baby pancakes, pretty much all of the things you want sweetener for, we want to use maple syrup. So I'm going to head inside and I'm going to get to work on preparing our dinner. Tonight we are making Dutch baby pancakes with homemade maple syrup, aka breakfast for dinner. So for this Dutch baby pancakes recipe, I'm going to be using a gluten-free and dairy-free recipe. So I'm gonna be using a gluten-free flour and some almond milk and some coconut oil. And I've done it before and it turned out delicious. So I'm very confident that this time will hopefully be just as good. I'm going to go ahead and preheat the oven to 425 degrees. Time to make some Dutch baby pancakes. A half cup of almond milk, three eggs from our chickens. We'll say it feels really weird putting eggs in a blender. A dash of nutmeg. This is one of my favorite gluten-free flours. I love it because it's based on garbanzo beans. A half cup of flour. That's it, I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the blender. While that's going, I'm going to heat up the skillet and put some coconut oil and let that melt down before I add the batter. I'm using an organic virgin coconut oil that is cold pressed and unrefined.
you're eating maple syrup, so I had to wear a flannel. And he looks kind of maple syrupy too. This is the most durable shirt you've ever seen. <laughs> so guys, we made Dutch baby pancakes, gluten-free, dairy-free, and covered with our homemade maple syrup. Mmm. -hmm. So good. I seriously could eat this for every meal. I think it might be a little too much sugar. <laughs> I think we're gonna end up being able to make all of our own for the year. Think so? What do you think? I don't know. I never have actually thought about how much maple syrup we really use, but I feel like we'll be tempted to eat it even more because we have it on Absolutely. our own now. Absolutely. Are you ready for making a lot more maple syrup? Ready as I'll ever be. <laughs> I don't know. Like I assume for some reason that if you bought it from a maple syrup company, that it would be better. But I feel like when you're in control of the process, you can really make the flavor how you want it. It doesn't really require all that much skill. No, it's so much easier than I thought, guys. It turned out that my spontaneous approach to this worked out. Anything you want to say about maple syrup, babe? Yo. Do you think we'll do it again? Yeah, absolutely. We'll do it every year that we have maple trees, wherever we are. This year was a good start, so we'll have a lot better idea of what needs to go into planning next year. And yeah. we have a lot more of the infrastructure in terms of buckets and things to mm -hmm. be properly prepared to start. It's one of those things that just like, why not? Just go for it. Thanks guys for watching our maple syrup adventure. Anything you want to say? <laughs> maple circle. Last bite. So maple syrup, everyone. Well, I hope you got the essence of how delicious this maple syrup was from watching this video. I'm sorry that you couldn't taste it or smell it from that side of the screen, but maybe one day we'll send you a sample. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. If we, don't, if we don't eat it all first. <laughs> if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't joined our adventure yet. We're so happy to have you a part of our journey and we can't wait to share our next video with you. Bye guys. See you guys. Thank you.